The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theatre Incorporated, presents Stolen Symphony, starring Robert Ryan and Joan Loring. Kate Smith is your hostess. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Here is your family theater hostess, Kate Smith. Hello, everybody. This is Kate Smith. As hostess tonight, I'd like to talk about our homes, about all our families. You know, it's a strange thing. So many of us often don't really know exactly what we want to do in life. But I think we'll all agree on one thing. We want a happy family and a happy home. Isn't it true finding happiness is like trying to secure anything else really worthwhile? It's something we have to work for. A home needs people who are cheerful and kind and generous and thoughtful. And a happy family is made of people who want to give of themselves to make everyone else happy. A family is happiest when they're working together and playing together, yes, and praying together, because family prayer unites every member of a little group in a common purpose, a wonderful purpose, to ask God's blessing on our home. And God blesses every home where there is family prayer. You'll never know all the peace and understanding and happiness that can be in your home until you begin the simple and beautiful custom of making family prayer a daily practice. Kate Smith will return after tonight's family theater drama, Stolen Symphony, which stars Robert Ryan and Joan Loring. Tonight, Family Theater brings you a half hour of music and melody. So just relax, folks. Close your eyes and dream with us. Maybe we can brush the dust of a tired day out of your mind with a little soothing symphony. Friends, I'm sorry to break into the music like this and cross up the airwaves, but it's the only chance I'll have to tell you what happened. Well, it's my story, and I won't disturb the music much. You see, here's the way it was. This morning at dawn, I was over the Rocky Mountains, flying eastward into the sunrise. It was a routine test flight of the new XP-88. Everything was going smoothly when... Just like that. Something in the motor burst. Gave no warning, just exploded into a shower of oil and flames. For two or three terrifying seconds, realizing what happened, before I could move into action. The plane was ablaze when I tripped the escape hatch and jumped. A brief singeing flame was in my hair, and as I yanked the ripcord, I felt the jerk and momentary pause when the chute opened. And then I lost consciousness. I landed lightly on my feet. It was strange because I was filled with a sudden surge of joy, an exhilaration and wonderful love of living. It was glorious just to stand there and look around at the mountains in the distance and the trees nearby. Then I saw my parachute being blown across the clearing. It surprised me because I didn't remember unbuckling the straps and then... And I saw the body still in the harness being dragged along the ground after the chute. Panic-stricken, I I ran after it and tried to stop the chute by catching the shrouds. But my hands passed through the cords and left them untouched. The chute kept billowing in the wind and dragging after it was the body. I couldn't stop it. Finally, the silk caught in the trees at the edge of the clearing. Then it stopped. And then I saw the face clearly. It was my own. 
I knew that I was dead. Yes, I really had known that from the moment I saw the body. Some of the clothes about it were burned, but the face was almost untouched. It was strange as I waited and looked. I felt that I was waiting for some decision to be made, some judgment that, that would sum up my life. But there was no court, no witness, no testimony, not even a judge. I stood alone in the clearing, bending over the partly burned body and looking into my own face. Everything that I had ever done was carved into the lines of it. And then I knew this was the judgment, the decision. I was judge and witness and accused. I saw all the evidence and read the verdict in my own face. The face hadn't changed. It looked exactly as it did when I was alive. Every line in it I had put there myself, hour by hour, by thoughts and deeds through the long years. But only now I saw. Only now I knew what the lines meant. It was like looking into a mirror and knowing what kind of a guy I really was. Not someone to be damned, I knew that, but I didn't think I wanted to go to heaven looking that way either. And then, suddenly beside me stood a beautiful young lady. She was dressed in blue denim trousers and a plaid shirt. Her hair was tousled. She smiled gravely when she spoke. Hiya, Jerry. Uh, all right, I guess. Congratulations, fella. But, uh... Uh, who, for what? Well, we've done a pretty good job. We? Why, yes, we. But I've, I've never seen you before. Oh, I've been around with you 24 hours a day for 23 years. You're a... an angel? Mm-hmm. An angel? Yes. Do all angels have red hair? <laughs> Only some of us. The seraphim are mostly blonde when they appear. Don't you like red hair? I'll change it. You mean that you... Hey, it's black. Yes. Better this way? No, no, no. Better red. Mm, I like red myself. You can change it to any color. Don't mind the appearances, Jerry. Colors and shapes and distances are only accidents. But you look like... Uh... Certainly. Angels can change into any form they wish. Just name it. Oh, it's all right. You're fine the way you are. Thank you. But hey, does the, the Lord stand for that? Angels turning into, well, into flaming redhead? <laughs> Jerry, you don't know him very well. That's why the world's so full of variety. He loves it. I've been living close to him for, well, almost a million years and then working with the Guardian since the world began. And, well, I can never tell what he'll do next. A million years? Well, not measuring by the sun, of course. You're not in time anymore, Jerry. We're living in eternity. No time? Changing colors? No distance? That's right. Well, Jerry, you and I better get going. Wait, there's one thing. Yes? I want to ask, could I... Well, I'd like just for a moment to see how Mother's taking what happened. You'd like to see her? Could we? Certainly. Just put your hand on my arm. Like that? Yes. And just like that, we were home. We walked right through the doors without opening them and right into the kitchen, where Mother was frying bacon and eggs for breakfast. Mother moved happily from stove to table and back again. She didn't seem at all worried. I knew then that she hadn't heard yet about my crash. She was humming as she walked right through the angel and toward the kitchen door. Oh, Billy! Alice, breakfast is ready. You'll have to hurry. Coming, Mother. Okay, Mom. Oh, oh, Mr. Adams, you frightened me. Good morning. Morning. Some uh, extra bread today? Yes, two loaves, please. Thank you. Won't you have a cup of coffee? No, thanks. I gotta get along. Beautiful morning. Just look at the way the sun comes through them trees. Just like you see it in the moving pictures. It's beautiful. And a clear blue sky. That means good flying weather. Oh, you mean for Jerry? <laughs> yes, he'll be home tonight. What's he up to now? Well, he's bringing some kind of a new test plane in from the coast. He is? Mm-hmm. Margaret Winters, if a net boy knew how much you loved him, he wouldn't be doing a danger job like that. He's a good boy, Mr. Adam. Yeah, but I know that. And he but... has to take the best job he can find. You know he's saving up for his wedding. Oh, I forgot that. Yep, he's all grown up. 
Well, that's how it is. They're here with you today, then they grow up and they're gone. Well, two loaves. But two be fine. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Adams. I saw new meaning for the simple things that were said and done. In life, it seemed I hadn't time to notice them. And my mother's place in our home took on a new importance. I was struck by the beauty of her face. She wasn't a handsome woman, but now I could see the goodness written in her features. It was reflected in the little things she did. Making breakfast, talking to the old baker, Pop Adams, washing dishes, and loving all of us. Somehow, I had never felt the full force of her love before. Only wish I could go over there and tell her. That... No, Jerry, I wouldn't try to disturb her. Why don't you hop up here on the ironing board with me? No, I'm all right. It's just that there are a number of things I wish I'd done to make her happier. Little kindnesses and remembrances. Yet, somehow, I now know she understands. Yes, it's, it's her patience that makes her beautiful. Her gentle understanding, the sweetness in her voice. Billy, are you up? Alice, breakfast is getting cold. You'll be late for school if you don't hurry. Oh, Mother, I simply must have a new dress. I don't have a decent thing to wear. Well, what about the blouse and skirt you got last week? Doesn't it have that, that new something or other you've been talking about for a month? But after all, Mother, I can't wear that to school. Oh. It's too... too... Well, you understand, don't you, Mother? I'm a high school senior and everybody expects us to look... Well, to look. Yes, yes, I understand. But let's do a little thinking about it later. But, hmm? Mother... Morning, Mom. Gee, I'll have to hurry. Billy, you interrupt him. Oh, gosh, sis, can't a fellow even say Please hello? Please don't begin the day arguing. Good morning, son. I'm not arguing. I just told Billy not to interrupt. That will be all now, Alice. Billy, did you say grace? Yeah, Mom, quick to myself, like. What about saying it slow for yourself to the Lord? Yes, Mom. Bless me, Lord, and all these gifts which we have, and thank you, too. Well, it's mixed up, Billy, but well, you look like a little angel when you act that way. Oh, uh, Mom, I don't want to be an angel. I want to be an aviator like Jerry. Well, when Jerry was your age, he didn't want to be an aviator. I uh, bet he didn't want to be an angel. No, I guess not. But Jerry's a good boy. Always dependable. Always, Mother? Well, nearly always. But Billy is a good boy, too, Mother. Hey, uh, sis, you feeling sick or something? No, Billy, I think you're sweet. Ah, uh, but you want me to do something for you. I was wondering if you'll have the time after your paper. Yeah, I bet you have another sorority meeting. No, it's the debate club. I won't have time in my dresses at the cleaners and you could... Okay, okay. I'll think it over. It was too bad Billy couldn't see what we were watching, the angel and I. It was a struggle of two thoughts going through his mind. And the plain face of a boy took on light lines, like the faint etchings that an artist makes when he begins to paint. And suddenly the lines changed and a brightness lightened his face. He smiled as though there were a generous, warm feeling inside him. Okay, sis. I think I'll be able to manage it. Oh, thanks, Billy. See, Mother, didn't I tell you he's a darling? Yes, I see, but what about you? Oh, Mom, I know she wants to go to that school dance tonight. Well, you're very kind to help her, son. No, no, I figured it out. You see, Jerry's away most of the time, and then he'll be getting married to Margie, and I'm the only man in the house, so it's just one of those things. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I better get going. Huh? Bye, Billy. Thanks. Bye, Mom. Uh, goodbye, son. Jerry, you see how much fun it is being an angel? Yes. I guess when I was alive, I just didn't see things the way they really are. Well, perhaps it's not so easy. I don't know. It looks very easy now. Well, that's because you're just standing by and watching. Maybe. But it seems wonderful to have the chance, like Billy had, to be kind and generous and make people happy. Can you see now how people really grow more beautiful? You know, it seems so simple. I don't know why I never thought of it when I was alive. Jerry, it's time for us to be going. Yes, I guess it is. I didn't know then where we were going. Yet, leaving was not like saying goodbye, because I had a realization that we would be separated only for a short time. 
true. I had a feeling of regret for what I might have done, but had left undone. Yet I felt happy remembering the little I had accomplished. If only Margie would understand. If only I... You're thinking she won't understand. Yes, it's... You'd like to go down to Grand Central Station and see Margie. Oh, you know where she works. Yes, and that you used to ride into the city with her some mornings, and that you used to see her to ticket window number four, where she is right now. You know a lot about Margie. Yes, yes, quite a lot. Oh? You seem to forget I've been around with you on for 24-hour duty. Then you know how much I really love her. Yes, and it's true love, Jerry, because you respect her. It's strange. I somehow think I should be sad because we were going to get married next month, and yet... Yet now you're happy. But that's only because you know your love for her is unchanged. Just a little different. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's why I'm so happy now. Well, here we are. Busy place. Everyone's in a hurry. Hey, what do you read, huh? What do you read? Get your afternoon paper first edition. Please, Lord, let me sell them fast this afternoon. I want to get home and see if Ma's feeling better. Did you hear what he said? Yes, Jerry, a little prayer. I never knew people prayed like that. You did it yourself sometimes, Jerry. I did? Sure. Most everybody does it at times. Just listen over there. You mean the red cap? Yes. Oh, Lord. Lord, I don't know what people put in their bags that make them so heavy. I ain't saying anything to anyone about it but you, but... Lord, give me a little patience with this lady. We've got me toting these things back and forth because she can't make up her mind where she's going. And, Lord... I hope you don't mind if I ask you to send her a little inspiration, but a good tip. Because I've been wasting a powerful lot of time with her, you know, and I'm just a poor working man. But... <laughs> well, that's a practical prayer. Yes, but sincerity is what God counts most. I can see now what Mother meant when she wouldn't come into the city. Yes, it must be confusing with everyone rushing and racing around you. I guess I was just as bad as anyone. It all seems so unnecessary now. Some of it is necessary. You see that couple over there? Uh, rushing to the train gate? Yes, they were just married. Hey, darling, hurry, I'm gonna miss the train. Yes, Joe, I'm coming. Dear God, help us make this a real marriage. Bless us and help us. She's praying, too. Certainly, Jerry. A great many people often say little quiet prayers like that all day long. When I was alive, I never heard anyone talk about it. Maybe not, but that's a part of the wonderful goodness in the world. That explains a lot of the kindness I never understood. I don't know why we delayed, but instead of going over to Margie at the window, the angel walked through the crowds around the station. Without question, I followed obediently behind her. It was interesting to watch the reactions of different people to the little things around them, but I was becoming impatient. Don't be impatient, Jerry. I don't see much purpose in wandering around here, and we came down to see Margie. Oh, but there is. You'll discover that. Besides, doesn't this chance to see people help you? Help me? How? To see the life you led in, in a new way. Is this a kind of judgment of myself? You can call it that. I understand. Yes. Then we're ready to see Margie. We came into the ticket booth where she was working. The angel and I perched on the ledger in which she kept accounts, and we watched her selling tickets and making change. Now I knew with a wonderful certainty why I loved her. There was a charm in her whole manner, a goodness and beauty in her face. She is beautiful, Jerry. Oh, she could only hear that. Why, it's the greatest compliment she could have received. Only because it's true. But you know, she wasn't always as nice as that. I was thought... I had trouble with you too, Jerry. Until you met her. You improved together. She really helped me a great deal, didn't she? Yes. You needed her encouragement. Thank you, Margie. I didn't realize how much being in love with you meant to me. I only wish I could tell you. I think she must have in some way heard what I was trying to say because she smiled and brushed back her hair. For a moment, she seemed so completely happy as she counted out the change. Eighty, ninety, one dollar. Yes, sir, you have ten minutes before the gates open. White Plains. One way? Round trip. What do you think I'm trying to do, get lost? Uh, that'll be a dollar thirty-two. Thirty-five, forty-five, fifty, two dollars. 
Thank you, sir. Don't thank me, lady. I'm only going because I have to. <sighs> Next. Poughkeepsie, one way, please. Two fifteen. Did they raise the prices? Well, the last time I went to Poughkeepsie... Please, I... madam, there are a number of people waiting. Two fifteen includes the federal tax. Oh, oh, Mr. Johnson. I'm so glad you came early. I have a special date tonight. I'll leave everything to you. I want to run. Oh, this lady is going to Poughkeepsie. Angel, you know something? What, Jerry? I never realized why Margie used to be tired. And some evenings when she'd want to stay home and I felt like going out, I'd get annoyed at her. Now I know what Mother meant when she said I needed patience and understanding if we were going to be happy together. But I... I love her even more now. I didn't think it would be like this, that I'd go on loving her when I was dead. Jerry, you'll be in love with her for all eternity. I'm glad of that. That's the way I want it. You know, I was afraid that after I was dead... You'd be a ghost in haunted house. <laughs> something like that. I, I never thought it'd be as real as this. It's more real now than when you were alive. Yes, everything seems easy to understand now. If only... You want to know what'll happen when they get word about you at home? Yes. Yeah, I'd like to be there. Maybe I I could... know you'd like to help, Jerry, but... Isn't there anything we could do if I could talk to them and say how happy I am? I don't think so, but... Well, we'll be there when Margie gets home. <clears throat> and so it was when we walked up the path to our home. Mother was sitting on the front porch, rocking slowly in the old chair that was always hers. She had the open telegram lying in her lap. There were tears on her cheek that she dried quietly with the edge of her apron. Alice was sitting near, and beside her, Billy was kneeling, holding her hand. Mother, you remember when Dad died two years ago? You remember what Jerry said? What was that, son? He said he'd be the man of the house and that he'd take care of you. Yes. I remember and he did. He took care of all of us. Well, that's what I wanted to say, Mom, because now I'll take care of you. You know that. Yes, son. I know you will. Well, Mom, you, you said God wanted it this way, and he has his own wise plans. Oh, yes. Yes, I know. It's only the... And, Mother, I'll take care of you, too. I'll... Mother, there's Margie. Oh. Oh, Billy... Don't, don't say anything to her at first. I'll go down and meet her. Hello, Margie. Oh, hiya, Billy. Oh, why so solemn and serious? You look like you had all the troubles of the world on your shoulders. But every day you're growing to look more like Jerry, and well, that's a big compliment. Thank you, Margie. Did, did Jerry get home yet? No, no. Mom is sitting out in the porch. Do you want to go up and sit with her for a while? Yes, and uh, you can keep me company, solemn face. That was the moment when the angel got the sudden bright idea of breaking into this program. And so we made it into the studio here and sat up in the microphone. But I guess no one around knows anything about it because the music continues undisturbed. But it was the angel's idea of telling Margie and Mom and Alice and Billy just what happened. And I guess anyone else who was tuned in could hear too. No, not everyone, Jerry. Only those who'd be made happy by listening. And will Margie be happy? Yes, very happy. I won't lose her. No, Jerry, you won't lose her. And when, when will she... Die? Yes. That's not my department, Jerry. But when her time does come, it'll be a gentle death. Margie, when it comes, don't be afraid. It's not hard to die, really, and I'll be waiting for you. I'll be waiting till you come. Jerry, it's time to go now. Yeah. Good night. Good night, Mother. Margie and Alice and Billy. Good night.
have been listening to a special half hour of soothing music. We hope you've been able to dream with us, to dream your own thoughts into a world of new hope. This program came to you through the courtesy of Jerry's Angel. Stolen Symphony has starred Robert Ryan and Joan Loring. Now, here is your family theater hostess for this evening, Kate Smith. What would you say to all of us getting together on a wonderful enterprise, an enterprise to bring greater peace, security, and happiness to the world? It seems like a large undertaking, but when there are millions of us sincerely thinking about that and praying and working for a better world, it can be done. In many ways, we're failing to overcome the unrest and intolerance and hate in the world around us because we do so little about the misunderstanding and disruption in family life and because we'll never have peace in the world or in our homes as long as we forget the importance of God's help and the power of prayer. We'll have a better and happier world if we have better and happier homes, homes in which there's the simple evidence of faith in God and the faithful practice of family prayer. We need prayer in our lives because all of us need God's help. So let's get together on an enterprise for every family, all families in America and the world praying together for peace. Yes, a world that will pray together for peace will stay together in peace, just as the family that prays together stays together. This is Kate Smith saying good night and God bless you. Our thanks to Robert Ryan and Joan Loring for their performances this evening, and to James B. Reuter and Mark Carney for writing tonight's play. Music was scored and conducted by Max Tear. This production of Family Theater Incorporated was directed by David Young. Others who appeared in tonight's play were Julie Bennett, Florida Edwards, Sarah Selby, Jimmy Scribner, Eddie Firestone Jr., and Ralph Moody. Next week, our family theater stars will be June Haver and Dennis O'Keefe in Broadway Lullaby. Your host will be Morton Downey. <laughs> This series of the Family Theater broadcast is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program and by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Brief portions of tonight's program were transcribed. Be with us next week at the same time when our Family Theater stars will be June Haver and Dennis O'Keefe with Morton Downey as host. Tony Lafrano speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.